appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 50. Oh, shit. We to a half a man, y'all. This shit getting real. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building for episode 50. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? This is Aaron Dante from No Picks at the Dark Podcast out of Baltimore, Maryland. How's everybody doing out there? Everybody's good out there. If they already hit the button, we appreciate them already. Okay, let's hit the rundown now. February 20th, February 20th. Y'all already know the live show is happening 6 p.m. February 20th at the barn. That is 4901 Catherine Street. Tickets are on sale now. You get with me to get the physical tickets or you hit the link in my bio to get the tickets off the Eventbrite. Tickets will cost you a little small $15, but I promise you it'll be worth it. Shout out to my sponsors for the show. We got Cloud 10 Treats will be in the building. We got Khadija Seafood that'll be in the building. And we have a scented candle that will be in the building on the 20th. Now, let's hit the rundown. H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. You follow that at, on Instagram at H2H Cleaning. We are here to help. You follow Custom Hustle Jerseys. That's my clothing line. Pick your own names, numbers, colors, and all of that. However you need them in and out of the country, in and out of the state, we can get it there. Also, now having the jackets with Custom Hustle. We now have the custom jackets. You pick your own, whatever you want on the jacket. Again, in and out of the country, in and out of the state, we can get it there. And it's very much worth the wait. Um, now, run through the radio lineup. E-Block Radio Network, every Monday, E-Block Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Monday. Tuesdays is the GFT Radio Network. Wednesdays is the Kickback app. It's 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Then we go to Philly, 1230 WTNUPhilly.com every Thursday. Fridays is the I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. And then we close out the week on Saturday at the THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. On Saturdays, we have something on Sundays, but we're waiting to dot those I's and cross those T's, y'all. Okay, episode 50. You ready, Bruce? That's the rundown. (laughs) Episode 50. What do we need to normalize? Shouts out to my girl, and she creates the podcast, uh, the connector. She is the you know what I'm saying she's the whole situation for the podcast. You out, out there in the underground scene, everybody knows and she creates. So I stole this one from her. That's my girl. We already got the okay for it. What do we normalize? What do we need to normalize uh, these days? A lot, brother. <laughs> a lot. I mean, we could talk all day, but we only got a couple minutes, so we can we can go into a couple of different things. Podcast drive through. We get you in and out, baby. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just normalizing. Little th- this is 2022, right? Normalize calling out of work. Normalize not have to be and feel like you gotta go to work because you're sick. Like I remember growing up, and you had to have, to have the perfect attendance. I don't know if you grew up or you know they had they had the chart board and whatnot stuff like that. Got the little. Oh. We used to get the little pins that go. Yeah. The shirt. I had a thousand of them in elementary school. Yeah. And then you get older and it transfers like you can't be late for work. You can't miss the work. You can't, you, if you're sick, show up to work. Whatever, that was ingrained when we were younger. But now you look at it, it's like, that's wrong. If I'm not feeling well, I'm not going to work. I'm going to chill. I'm going to get, get my, my mental health ready. I'm not working for somebody else to make them feel good. So that's one of my big things is with 2022 is normalize your mental health and your being and who you are as a person. Normalize. If I don't feel well, am I sick? Go home. Don't even go in. I'm not stressing myself all day. And that's one big thing that I'm pushing for myself and all my friends. So it's one of those things where I'm going to jump on this that you're saying. Uh, 2020 taught me that no matter your position, no matter your job, how long you've been there, what status you held with that job, these motherfuckers could come in at any time and say, we no longer require your position. You no longer work here. We no longer need you. So if you feel as though you are not at your best on whatever specific day, by all means, you take that time and do what you need to do. That's the beauty of my job is it's just me down there. <laughs> That's all I'll say about my job. <laughs> I had the best job in the world for a couple of years now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but nothing's yeah, wrong with that, brother. Yeah, if you don't feel good, though, you know, don't you don't don't overexert yourself for somebody who can walk in at any given time and tell you, like, bye. For real, for real. I learned that. It's funny. I learned that way back. And I just, 
I work for this company, a great company to work for. And um, I worked for them for like 13 years. And I always remember, I put my two-week notice in. Mind you, two-week notice. I worked 13 years for this company. I put it on a Monday. They had to replace it for me on Thursday. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, I, you know, I thought I was special. Nah, they just, you just another number. That's all you are. Shouts, another- shouts out to Uncle B from the Bridge and the Gap podcast. I'm the king around this bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll tell, tell them niggas you the king at the job. Niggas made all kinds of, uh, all kinds of concessions to keep Uncle at the job. Shouts out to Uncle B. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my joint would be let's normalize strong families. Mm. Uh, let's normalize being an active father being an attentive uh, mother uh, let's normalize showing our kids like uh, what a man looks like what a woman looks like not what a toxic relationship and arguments and you know the negative shit looks like let's try to build in this next generation because shit uh, episode from two weeks ago shouts out to Cree Forge on episode 47 uh, what was the episode 48 um we was talking about the murder rate in philly where we hit 560 uh it was 556 at the time we recorded that episode but we hit 560 for the year which is not normal at all like there's no way in hell that you should have that going on and there's that many broken situations and damaged homes because the person who does the shooting and gets to get shot now we got two homes that are now broken and you multiply that by 560 murders now that's how many different situations are fucked up. So let's normalize the strength of a family. Let's emphasize family. That was another episode that I did. Uh, Shots out the rail. I did that episode with her and my sister. Um, where it was like, excuse me, we don't have an importance on family anymore. The relationships between a brother and a sister or two sisters, two brothers is just treated like any casual relationship where it's like, uh, oh, I don't talk to him, or I don't talk to her, and it's about nothing for real, for real. Mm. So let's strengthen these situations and show our kids and show our parents that, like, yeah, well, I ain't even nothing. You can't even speak for everybody's situation to say, like, that I paid attention and that I grasped what you was trying to teach me as a child because everybody wasn't being taught those things, which is how we got here. I love it. I love that. I love normalizing families. I remember growing up, and uh, my dad had, like – um nine brothers, three sisters, and um, so eight brothers and three sisters. And it was crazy. Every Sunday we had dinner. Every Sunday we had, we had dinner every Sunday and just made sure that family, family is very important. You know, when you were the kids, the kids didn't see what the older folks are talking about. They were like, you need to step out the room. You know, we need to start doing things that like that nature, understanding, educating. educating. Let me, Go ahead. Let, me, let me jump in on you right here. One of them things that I hate that people do is I constantly tell people all the time, like I don't drink with my mom. I'm, first of all, my mom don't drink, but I don't drink with my mom. Mm. Like me and my aunts ain't like taking shots together. Me and my uncles ain't, I can be as grown as I want. I'm never going to walk out my mom's house and just fuck this, fuck that, and none of that. Like I just, certain lines that you do not cross. And along those lines are the things that you're saying though, but those things are the things that can emphasize when the family dynamic is strong when there's respect everything is always about respect if you have enough respect for a situation then you're not going to cross that line as a person myself i've been muslim my entire life there's a church right here behind my house this church has been here my entire life i've never been the type of person because i'm muslim though i'm gonna walk past the church and it's still fuck this that i wouldn't do that mm-hmm. it's a certain level of respect that you have for different situations and different things that has to be implemented into you though same way, like you saying, as far as these family dynamics, because that was something else I was going. My bad, just was your answer, and I'm jumping all over you. Are you good? But it's your show, baby. One of, yeah. my, <laughs> one of my cousins, like the first cousin of mine, in like my generation that died, she got sick, ends up dying. We all at the hospital. None of our kids know each other. Hmm. All of us are here because we all grew up together. Because, like you were saying, those different dinners, those birthday parties, and all of that type of thing, we all were there together as kids. Now it's like. You had another son? I didn't even know you was pregnant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you got three kids? Or what's his name? And like, all of that shit is a problem. That's how you end up with your little cousins in school talking to each other and they don't even know that they're little cousins. Yeah, I know. I, listen, I No, no, you're good. No, everything you're saying, the dynamic. I have never had a drink in my parents' house. Even when we've had funerals, the repast at my parents' house, and all the cousins are there, I still have not had a drink in my parents' house. 
that's how it is. And I, I like how you broke it down. I just don't do it. I respect the house. I respect the house. They, when I come home to my house, I'll drink. I'll party all I do. But it's, it's their house. And I but was that's, yeah, that's, that's your situation where you get to call the shots. I go to mom's house. It's mom's situation. It ain't that type of party. I right. don't understand that shit. Like, that shit don't make sense to me. <laughs> But yeah, I I love that. I love the family dynamic. I, I definitely went definitely. And then I want to also like just talk about podcasting, man. A little bit, just a little bit, about just normalizing that black people have really good podcast. You know, I, I see it in the industry right now where a lot of us don't get respected. Uh, I give you an example. We um, Baltimore, predominantly black city. You know, I, I don't hear about too many black podcasts unless I know about it. Other people don't know too many about. It. They only know about like. So and so, so and so. There's so many great shows like yours, so many shows like OTR that's out there in Maryland. So many great shows, and one normalize that. Shouts out the least. Shouts out the least. Winnie, uh, Millennials Anonymous. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Shouts out the Juice. <laughs> I'm saying I, so I many. Couple, of them. Yeah, I got a lot of Baltimore folks. <laughs> and there, but there's so many. And I want people to go out and listen and hear what we have to say. There's things that we are talking about that people need to hear. You know, I'm sick of hearing about Joe Rogan. I'm sick of hearing about the popular mainstream people that everybody hears about. We have great stories and normalize that also. So that's another thing I want to go into 2022 is pushing the black agenda as far as let's talk, let's listen more black podcasts. Let's hear what everybody's talking. Pick, let me piggyback on what you where you going with that one then. Let's normalize the hard work that it takes to get these podcasts to a, a certain level of success. Uh oh, you about to open the can of worms now. Most of us don't want to put the necessary work in to get these things to be a revenue stream. Most people just want to push, hit record on the butt, hit record on the phone or whatever you record on, hit record, laugh, tell a couple of jokes, and then that's the end of the work. Mm -hmm. That can't be the end of the work. Like the work only starts with the content. The funny thing about these topics and things is everybody has an opinion on any topic that you're going to talk about. So you could pull up on any street corner of the bus stop and get three people and say, yo, look, let's go do a podcast. And you could get three, four, five different opinions when y'all do that conversation. But it's all about who's going to do the work necessary between my show drops on Mondays. So who going to do the work necessary between Tuesday and Sunday? Cause that's when the work is really done. Anybody can come here and record and talk about what do we need to normalize? Anybody cannot do the work between, like I'm saying, for this example, it's Tuesday to Sunday. Let's normalize that hard work. Not It's not even hard, really, to be honest with you. It's just all about, like you said, when we started off this conversation with your job. Your job can come in at any time and tell you that you don't no longer have a position. So why wouldn't you want to get yourself to a situation where you work for you and you're the one giving out the positions? That was another reason why I did the How to Hustle seminars, which can be purchased uh, right now. How to Hustle seminars is a five-week course that I did. You hit me in the DMs, and I can get you that information. I love it. I love the plug. But, yeah, I like what you just said about, about the work, putting the work in. I, I preach this a lot to a lot of people. Now, you, you're a podcast veteran. You know the game. So here's the funny part. Everybody wanted to do a podcast back in 2020, late 2000. 2020, 2021, because we were in a pandemic. Everybody was sitting still. I remember I had probably 20 to 30 people a week. Hey, how can I almost start a podcast? I'm going to start a podcast. And now you look at them, they haven't done more than five episodes after that. And kind of like what you said, they didn't want to put the work in. They All they thought was, was hit, get up, hit record, and put a shit out there. They didn't realize the marketing. They didn't realize the editing. They didn't realize the sound. They didn't realize how to push the product out there and make sure and try and get the audience out there. I know a lot of podcasts right now who are dormant right now. That was like, they were all excited talking about this and that. They're not doing anything right now. And I look at, somebody asked me the other day, they said, well, would you work with the podcaster who has less than hundred episodes? Yeah, I would work with them. I said, but here's the thing. I need you to put more work in. Not, I'm not saying more than hundred, but I'm saying like 50 to 60 because it becomes as a hobby or are you trying to make a business and like you're a veteran you got oh you you were a part of groups before then and now you got your own thing going on you know the game how it works you know how hard it is to do a group and then roll solos a whole different game and yeah but 10 but, for those who don't know my old podcast had about 10 of us on the show right so <laughs> i remember that i remember the philly philly crew i remember that i remember yeah, that. Shout out to olf and i just and i want people to normalize like it's like i had somebody ask me the other day they, literally 
but we want to get podcasters out there. We want to promote them in Baltimore. I said, okay, cool. How do you want to do it? Well, we don't really know any of the podcasters in the city. Oh, you don't. <laughs> All right. So how are you going to get it going? Well, we know, you know, well, okay. If, I, if you're going to get me, then that's a consulting fee. Mm-hmm. That's a consulting oh, shit. If you if you go asking me to do work, that's consulting them. That means I'm going to find the talent and find the product that you're looking for out here. I know who's doing what, but again, that's not. If you're going to pay me, you can pay me to do the job, and I'll tell you who who's who out here right now. But I'm not going to do it just free pro bono at this point. It doesn't happen like that. And that's one thing I've learned. My first year doing this podcast, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. I was doing it, you know, no, 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 no uh, sponsorships. Second year, sponsors came looking for me. They're like, you got something. Don't go there yet. Don't go there uh, yet. We, uh, we get uh, there. Uh, sorry, sorry, I got sorry. you. We ain't sorry, there yet. Sorry, I got sorry. you. I got you. So <laughs> I start smiling and laughing when you said when you was going here because uh, this is my whole thing as always. Uh, I make so many different connections with so many people around the country. International hype. I tell people it's not just a hashtag. This is a way of life. I can make a call and get you damn near anywhere because <laughs> I like to be able to say, you just say Baltimore and I can say, oh yeah, I can give you a rundown of niggas I know from Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Last week's episode, shout out to Jock. I did the episode with Jock from Mississippi. I did the episode with the Underground Queens from Mississippi and they told me, they well, don't even know the other podcasters in Mississippi. I told her, I got you. I got folks down there. I like to be able to make those different connections now. Like what you're talking about was, hey, we want to build a connection with different podcasts. Okay, well, we know you know that. All right, so you need a consultant fee, like you said, because th- all these things only happen, though, when you place yourself in the place that you have the value, you have put the work in, and they understand that you have the knowledge. If you need me for any knowledge that I have, this is going to come at a premium. Unless I fuck with you. If I fuck with you, then, like I said a thousand times, I could plug you into a bunch of different situations if I believe that this situation is right for you. Mm-hmm. Like, our two shows are more of a discussion, more of a serious topic type of thing. So if somebody hits me looking for comedy, I wouldn't come to you. I wouldn't do it myself because this is not the lane that I feel. This is not what you need. But being able to make those different connections all happens when it goes back to normalizing the work making sure that the work is done, that the foundation is laid and understanding that this is not going to happen just because you said you wanted it to happen. Same way like you was talking about, you know, how many people started a podcast. I cannot tell you how many people <laughs> would send me podcasts saying like, hey, I'm in college and I'm thinking about starting a podcast. How do I grow my audience and all of that? Because yeah, I could, we all can do a podcast. Anybody can do a podcast. Because we all got those five, six topics we've been waiting for somebody else that we've been listening to to tackle that they haven't tackled. And we got the strongest opinion on them. Great. What are you going to do for episodes 10, 12, 13, 14? When I left OLF was in August of 2020. I started How to Hustle February 1st of 21. I took all of that time because I lined up 20 guests before I had a logo, before I had a name. I had 20 people saying, yeah, I'll do the show. I had two radio stations already saying, yeah, when you get it together, we'll put you on. I did all of that because you have to line it up and do the work to make sure that it's legit. You can't just come out like like you said, man, we got five episodes we couldn't wait to do. We banged them out in three days and now what? Mm. Now we ain't doing it no more. You went from gung-ho to talking about this shit. You made four or five posts, and now that's the end of it. No, that can't be the end of it. But again, if you come to the How to Hustle seminars, I can explain to you how you work all of those different situations out. And, and I, <laughs> you, hey, you, you hit it right in the head, man. Like I told people, they're like, you know, they all, I, you, just like you requested, hey, can I be on your show? Can I be on your show? And I always ask people like, okay, what are we going to talk about? What, what are you bringing to the table? What, are, what do you want to talk about, you know? And, I, and I'll tell you this also. This is, and I have a golden rule, and a lot of people, I tell people it's all the time in Baltimore. If you were on one of my friend's shows a week or two ago, or a month ago, or two months ago, I'm not going to have you on my show because you're not going to tell me anything different than I just heard on, on that show. And guess what? Nothing to offend, no, no offense to you. We all make choices. So guess what? I'm going to support you and my friend's show, but I don't need you on that show again because it's going to be the same story over and over again, played over. So I try to make all my guests unique and different. It's something where they haven't heard this or somebody new or fascinating. Go ahead. I got something. See, 
Oh, I'll see. <laughs> All right. So this is a thing. Uh, this is a thing that I always tell people. Again, it's all about the work. Mm-hmm. You have to do homework on the guests, whoever that guest is. The same way uh, I come up, my topics are all solely based on who this guest is, mm-hmm. because I think that you would be good to talk about this. This is why we're here. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. Here. So I always do. Okay. I could have listened to, if I know I got you coming on, I'm going to listen to two, three f- interviews and things that you did. So that, like you just said, you could have been on with OTR to use them, for example. Shout out to OTR. Shout you could have just been on with OTR. But I know if OTR asked you these type of questions, we're going completely away from that because I don't want to have the exact same show. Right. Because you have so many people who do not put that work in and then they don't understand that you're getting the exact same episode on no picks or OTR on how to hustle on, you know, different joints because you didn't do the homework to make it different. If I bring you on my show and I know like a person that only talks about sex on their show, guess what we're not talking about when you come on with me? It's mm-hmm. sex. Because they can get sex out of you every week, every Tuesday at four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can get right. that out of you. When you come here, I want them to say, oh shit, I didn't even know that about you. Because I ain't got something different out of you. But that only comes when you do the work. When you check that background and make sure that this is a good fit or you make sure that this is a topic that they would be strong in. Right. Hey, hey and like, it's funny, I'm, the, I'm working on my new season right now as we speak, and I'm, I'm dropping it out. I'm dropping new episodes will come out January 24th. A little shout out, a little nugget for everybody. January 24th. Hold, see, you don't know that this episode just dropped today on January 24th. <laughs> oh, oh, even better. Even better. <laughs> even better. Even better. I didn't even know that. All right. So, damn, I'm dressed. A lot of stuff going to drop that day. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm doing like, I, like kind of like you say, you're doing the homework. You know, I have, I, I'm not in my studio right now, but in my studio, I have a board that I have all my guests on that I'm having on for February and March. Like you said, you, you do the first five, but you need to know who am I doing for the next 10 to 12 weeks? How can I lay, lay this out right now? You know, I was going, I was actually doing a lot of in-person interviews lately, but then with the Rona acting crazy again, I'm like, all right, we back to Zoom. We back to Zoom. No, no questions asked for me because I can get it done quicker on Zoom and it's easier. And I, we get a time, 30 minutes, like you said, and we in and out, you know? So now I'm changing the game where I'm like, all right, we're not doing anything in person. We're going to do, do quick Zooms and now and learning and just beating up. But again, I did the homework. You do the 10 to 12. That's who you're going to go after. Know your audience. Know who's, who's listening. Know who you're going after. Knowing that you're going to do something that's unique and different. And that's why I give a quick plug for myself i won best of best, best, best podcast go for baltimore we, we, go ahead you're good we going into you right now so this is a good segue this end the end of the episode is all about what you got going on shout out to my brother just called me from jail what's up Bree? um i couldn't answer bro uh but go ahead we diving into you right now so we go ahead and throw all of that out there now yeah i won the best of baltimore uh 2020 and 2021 Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it for Baltimore Sun and Baltimore Magazine. And that's a that's a huge accomplishment because there's a lot of podcasts out here. There's a lot of people that you can listen to anywhere, anywhere. But when you bring the homework, bring the work in, bring in time, put the effort in, and people see that. They want to listen. They want to be a part of it. And that's a huge accomplishment for me. You know, I started a team called Tom C. Collective Media. It's a group of podcasters that are doing great things in Baltimore. You know, some of us have fell off. Some of us are still going strong. The, the core of us is still going. That's what's all about. Now, the biggest thing for me is representation matters. And when my picture was on the well, on Baltimore Sun of being the best podcast, I teared up because I said, now other people can look, aspire, and say, wow, if he did it, you can do it. People understanding. Though, like you said earlier, it's relationships. If you don't build those relationships out here, it's not going to happen. Now, with every all my sponsors, I have relationships with all these sponsors. Our relationships with all these people who want to say, hey, how can we help you out? How can we get you, get your voice heard in DC, Philly, New York? How can we expand your audience? And that's where I'm at right now. And it's a, it's a great situation. And like I said, monetizing, it's there. Now the money's coming in. And it's cool, like, not to even have to pay out your pockets for new equipment. That's a great thing. You know, I'm doing stuff at, at different venues. I'm not putting any money out. That's the crazy part. They're like, yo, we want you here because we know what you can bring. And that's what it's all about. And I tell people, work hard, 
have guests on your show. If you are going to be the only person on your show, you better be damn well be talking about something that's better than goddamn anything in the world. Because guess what? Nobody wants to hear that. Have guests on your show. But that's the only way you're going to cross over. You say you were have somebody from Mississippi. You have people all over the United States. That's why people were following because they're like, he's, he's doing his thing. So that's why I tell people. So again, you know, you can check me at nopixafterdark.com anytime um, I'm there. Uh, no Pics After Dark on, um, on Instagram and Twitter. But again, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to have me on the show. I really, it's an honor, really, just to be on your show. I really appreciate it. All right. Uh, I locked you through at me right there. Let me <laughs> jump. Let me jump back real quick because something you said before I die, before, like I said, we go this portion of the show is about you. Okay. But let me jump back to something you said when you said um, about collaborations with people. Um, I don't have like a rule for my collaborations with people as far as how many episodes you got. You can have those five or six or seven episodes. And if I listen to these and I feel like the content is strong enough and I see that you are going about it the right way, you can have five episodes, but you're promoting the hell out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like you going about it in a way that you going to go longer than just these five, six, seven episodes. You didn't going to stop at 20 followers and now you ain't had a post in a year and a half. If I see that you have that drive and that passion and that you really want this shit, I ain't got no problem doing a collab with you with only a couple of episodes. That was something you said that I kind of got lost. I didn't get a chance to say nothing about. Now, the listening to your podcast, this was one of those things that I love. Like me and you just talked about this where Listening to shows all the time. When you listen to a podcast and you like, oh God, here they go with the uh, commercial. When you, let's just say like an ESPN or something. Mm -hmm. Here they come with the commercial. I don't even want to hear this shit. So I got on this side of the mic and then it's like, hell yeah, you need these commercials because these commercials and different things and different ads and reads and stuff. Same way that I just did the rundown for the live show with the sponsors. The first time I listen to your show and you go to a break and it's, I got this one, I got this one, I got this one. Oh shit. Then you go back a little bit more and you did it again. And I said, got to tap in with him. Got to figure out what he's doing that I'm not doing. Because like another thing that you just said, I absolutely love when you say the Baltimore Sun situation. I'm a type of person who says, that's what's up. Aaron got on there because it helps. It motivates me to want to get on there. I ain't the type to go, how the fuck he get on there? And I ain't did it. Like I got 26, six likes on my last picture. He got 12, like all of that type of little petty corny shit. I ain't that boy at all. Mm -hmm. So I love to see somebody else doing something. Cause then it says, okay, that's where the goal is. When I get on a different station and they tell me such and such is the number one show copy. Now I know where the market is. I know where I need to get to, to where I can get to be number one. Nobody's in any, nobody ain't in nothing to be number two. <laughs> and if you are, you got a problem. You could be striving to be number one. Maybe you never get there, but you know where the benchmark is. And talk to us about the sponsorships and those different deals and how you were able to work all of that. Because I've got a lot of podcasters listening to this and they want to know that type of thing. We also did talk about that on the Hot Awesome Seminars, but you know, throw it out there again. <laughs> hey, what I, okay, so this is what I tell people day one. This is free game. Where do you go eat every, Where do you go eat all the time? Where do you go shop at all the time? Where do you go get your coffee from every time? Where do you all spend your money all the time? At? Do you know the owners? Do you know these people? Do you have relationships with these people? Do you? If That's where my sponsorships have come from. Those relationships. I've spent millions. Zeke's is one of my number one sponsors. Zeke's Coffee is my number one. It's one of the biggest coffee spots in Baltimore. Guess what? I get a coffee. You used to get your coffee every day of the week. I'm getting friends with the owner. Owner, the, the manager. We breaking bread, taking coffee, talking. I tell them, I podcast is coming out. All right, we'll see how you do the first year. The second year come around, let's do some business. Okay? That's what, it's relationship building. I can go to Remix Bar and Grill, another black-owned restaurant, re building relationships, and do wellness. Oh, shit. Maggie <laughs> Farm. I eat there a lot. Why can't I, why can't we partner together? I'm spending my money in there. Why can't we work together and promote your spot and my spot at the same time? People understand, it's a relationship building. Not everybody can do it. Not everybody can do that. I'm just telling you what it is. It's hard to do it. So understand this free game. Where do you eat? Where do you shop? Where do you go? Where do you hang out at? Where do you buy? If you say, Prince, guy said, well, I'll talk to a liquor guy. All right, you go buy his liquor every week. You go to that store every week. Then guess what? He can sponsor your show then. You spend all that money there. Why can't sponsor? This is free game for everybody. Understand it's not hard, but here's the thing. You got to have a media kit. 
put a media kit together, put in what you got going on, put in on what, how many people are listening, how many downloads, how many streams, how many, all that stuff. This is all that stuff needs to be on a media kit. Again, these are the things that I do that I've learned. And I try to tell people this and they don't do it. And I say, okay, that's cool. What, to each his own. But I'm not saying you can get a, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to say a lot to you, tell you you're going to get sponsored off the jump. That ain't going to happen unless you break in 100,000 downloads off the first episode. That ain't happening. A lot of the companies I've deal with, they, the first thing they look at me is, where's your media kit? How many downloads do you have? How many episodes do you have? What's your dynamics? Who are your listeners? What's the age group? That's the first questions they ask me off the jump. And guess what? I have it right there. And I, it's right in the email, right there, ready for them. And, and then right there in the PDF, ready for them to read. And they're like, all right, we, you got everything here. And then you get build accolades. You, you know, I worked with Guinness Brewery. Guinness, one of the biggest beer companies in the world. <laughs> they sell the biggest, they sell some of the most, the, their second biggest market is in Africa. People probably don't even know that. But that's a whole different story for a different day. Guinness, I worked with Visit Baltimore. So your equivalent would be Visit Philly. Working with them, working with, you know, so many live Baltimore for housing built like people are going to live. These are things that you start building when a company starts seeing it, you start starting slow and you start building and then sponsors like we want to work with you. Relationship building is the key. Be in the right place. That's all I tell people. You know, you got, you got, like you said, we do a podcast, one recording. The business starts Tuesday through Sunday when you're out there making those relationships. That's when, our, that's when my real work starts. This is easy. You're not talking. But going out, making that phone call and talking and saying, like the other day I had coffee with Zeke's and they were my main sponsor. Like, let's re up for next year. Let's do it. And I said, okay, well, can we pay in full for the whole year? That's a whole year. A whole year. We, we, had, we haven't started 2000. We just started 2022. They're like, we're cutting the check for you for a whole year. What's up? That's. That, that's where you want to be because you want people to be comfortable with you. You want to build those relationships. So that way they're like, we want to work with you. So that's all I tell us free game. Everybody that's free game. This is, this is why I wanted to have you on is because one of those things that I always tell people is if you always the smartest person in the room, get the fuck out the building. Uh, and I know, like I said, listening to you, the first time you went to a second break with more sponsors, I said, I got to tap in with this nigga. We got to talk. We got to figure this situation out because I know that this game that you could give me that I'm not up on. Because like I said, you can't always know everything. There's always somebody that you got to be able to lean on and turn to and say, yo, look, how do you help with this different situation? And I love this shit. Like I said, most of the shit that you're saying is the shit that I tell people is like, how many times did you go to the club and you went 0 for 5 that night? We went 0 for 10 that night. <laughs> did it deter you from going back the next week or the next night and shooting at something? When this girl said no, the worst thing that I always tell people that with the sponsorship situations is the worst thing somebody's going to tell you is no. That's all they're going to tell you. Like, that's all they're going to tell you. So the same way that the girl in the green dress said no, you're going to shoot at the one in the purple dress and the white dress and the, and the jeans. And like, you're not, you're going to keep doing it until you get the answer that you're looking for. If you give a fuck about this, if you care, if you got the drive, if you got the passion, if you want this to be a career, if you want it to be a hobby, then you're going to stop at the first girl that told you no and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. And my whole day is ruined. Hey, <laughs> I tell, I, hey brother, I, I'm, I, everything you just said is exactly the truth. I've said I've gotten no several times. And you know what? Now those no's came back and said, hey, can we work together? Because they messed up. They knew at the beginning. They were like, well, we don't know who you are. Oh, but I tell people all the time. I'm going to catch. I'm the catch. If mm -hmm. you fuck that up for you, copy. We can still do business. It's just gonna cost you more. Hey, what what they what you said? <laughs> you said the price has gone up. And hey, let me tell you, the price, price of the brick went up. It has gone <laughs> up. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. I'm actually using it as a uh, as a from um from the uh from the, from the show The Wire. This episode I was watching the other night with Marlo. He said the same exact thing after he killed. Probably. Price of the brick one. Yeah, yeah. The price of the brick went up. You don't like it, nigga. Step off. Yeah, he, but he said that. I was like, yeah, you know, that's the mentality. And it's like, you got to strive. So going to what you're saying is you got to build relationships. People, if you want those sponsors, build the relationships, build them. Talk to these people who you spend your money in every day. You know, you can't blind just shoot email to people. It's not going to happen. They're not going to give you money. Work with these people. Tell them results. Show them what's going on. They want their number driven. You know, 
They want they want to see their ad on your Instagram on their Instagram. They want to oh, see. I'll uh, go. In, I'll yeah. go to people's spots and just drop them wristbands off and just say, "Yo, how many people y'all got back there? Right. It's five of y'all in there. Yo, look, here goes eight wristbands. You can leave the other ones on the counter. Let anybody take them." Yeah. So, uh, well, one cool thing <laughs> was it's crazy. You said I did when when the when the uh, pandemic was at its crazy height. I went around to all these restaurants and dropped off my mask. I had the mask with my no pigtail the dark logo. Mm. Every time they were at getting liquor, or because we could, because during time you could get takeout liquor, you know, we could get buy a drink, you buy a mimosa to go. And every time mm. they went to the bartender, they had no pigtail dark on their face. Damn, mm -hmm. that's advertising. That's advertising. Advertisement is advertisement right is everything, bro. You know, but that's I mean, that's a little bit. We could talk all day. Hopefully, we can get you down here to Baltimore and do something really big, like a festival podcast festival. We try and work up down here. Hold on, that sounds like that sounds like an off mic conversation. Let's, let's wrap up episode. <laughs> let's wrap up episode fifty because we still got conversation to have. Uh, let them know where to follow you at, bro. Uh, before we wrap up episode fifty. No picks after no picks after dark .com. Um, You can find me there. Uh, actually, yeah, no picks after dark .com. That's my website. You can find me at no picks after dark on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, all that stuff. Instagram, Facebook. You can find me. Reach out. Shoot me a DM. You want to ask questions, please say, I heard your episode. You know, I want, want to talk a little bit further. I, I don't mind. Like, listen, I don't charge everybody. Okay. I don't do that. I, if people are genuine, like you said, and they want help, I, I'm, I'm open door. I'll help anybody. Like you said, I will help anybody. But when the corporations are asking for that, that's a whole different, that's a whole different price. Whole different ballgame. <laughs> that's a whole different ballgame. But <laughs> my door is open and I'm always here to help out. So nopixeradark.com. You can find me, nopixeradark at Gmail. All that stuff. Find me. I'm there. And I will, if, I, if you email me, I'll probably won't respond for two weeks. Hit me on Instagram and say, hey, I just saw your episode and I'll hit you right back. That's All right, y'all. Don't forget, though, February 20th, we got the live show. Tickets are on deck. Tickets are on me or on the Eventbrite. Uh, on any of my pages, you can hit the link in the bio and the Eventbrite is there. That's episode 50. Aaron, appreciate you coming on, bro. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.